Okay, this is part two of my review of the Super Console X2 Pro retro gaming console that you can buy right now off of AliExpress. If you're interested in purchasing one of these for yourself, go to the description of this video. I've provided a link that'll take you to the exact store where I purchased this device that I am reviewing today. In a previous video, I opened up a box to show you all the components that came included with my purchase. And my total purchase price came out to just around $75. That's was, that was with taxes and shipping included. And when you're selecting your device, there's gonna be two options, one for a 64 gig and another for a 256 gig. It is worth the added money to spend on the larger memory card if you're gonna play this retro console uh, and and take advantage of all the things on here i highly recommend you get the uh 256 gig device and as you can see here in the background we have a random video that loaded up this is standard with uh the uh, system that runs uh, it's called emulic and this is a free app that you can install a free os that you can install on any android uh, TV box that you may already own. So if you do not want to go to AliExpress and you just want to install Emuelic yourself, you can do that. Some of the downsides to doing it yourself is that you will have to spend a lot of time uh, modding the uh, Android device and also you will need to locate all the emulators and ROMs and, and they're not very easy to find and also you want to be able to acquire them legally so when you purchase this uh, Super Console X Pro you're getting all the emulators and ROMs already installed on this 250 gig uh, uh, mini SD card and so to get out of this screensaver, you just tap the direction pad, which is what I did. And if you look at the bottom left hand side of your screen, you can see here it has 107,000 games installed. I do want to mention that there are a ton of duplicates. So when you're going through this list of all games, you're going to see a ton of uh, duplication here. Uh, the nice thing, though, is that when you find a game that you like, you can favorite the game and it will appear at the top of your list. And so we're just going to hold this button down and you can see the extent of ROMs that are included here. This is one of the advantages of going from the 64 gig up to the 256 is that you're going to have way more ROMs included. If you do the, the 64 gig, you're going to have 80,000 games, but those last 20,000 are more memory intensive, like the PSP and the DS, um, Dreamcast, those games take up a lot more space, so they'll cut those out to make room for the other 80,000. So go ahead and spend the extra money to get the 256 gig. As you can see, it comes included with a ton of games here. And let's just say you did not want to scroll through the list. There is an, a button here that you can type in uh, 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 anything that you'd like, and it will it'll source it for you. So let's do something that's fairly common, Mario and any game with the title Mario on there, it will show you. There are hacks that were included as well. So here we have Brutal Mario included in with this device, which I thought was really cool. Now, this all games is not the only way that you're gonna find games here. They've actually categorized them by console. So if we look through here, you can see PlayStation, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Neo Geo Pocket, uh, Neo Geo Advanced Entertainment System. This is the arcade cabinet of games that you can play. Uh, so if you were ever at an arcade, you would have probably seen some of these games cost, you know, a couple of tokens to play. They're all included here uh, and they're all set to free play. So uh, Neo Geo CD, uh, Sega Naomi. This is another console or uh, arcade cabinet that you would typically see at an arcade. These are a little bit more graphic intensive. I have ran a few of these on this device and they ran smoothly. I'll be showing you in just a second how that looks. We have the Dreamcast. Uh, this is not a complete list of Dreamcast games. If you own any ROMs that you wanna add to it, it's very easy to go in, take out the micro SD card, plug it into your, uh, your uh, computer, have probably an SD, uh, card converter that can that can plug in the micro sd but i've done that myself i've gone in added some roms taken out some roms 
so that uh, it can be more customized to my liking. You can see here there's a category category called Sega Genesis Hacks. So these are all games that were hacked by somebody and installed on this device. I do want to mention one of the downsides of this is that since there's 107,000 games, no one has really taken the time to verify that every one of those games will work. So sometimes you will try to play a game and for whatever reason you'll troubleshoot uh, some of the common things that you can do to uh, to fix the, the ROM, it just will not run. And that's unfortunate, but I, I will say that about 90% of the time you're gonna load up a game and it's not gonna have any issues, especially if you're sticking with some of the main category, NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis. Those all run perfectly without much uh, tinkering needing to be done. Now on this Atomus Wave, you might find a few on here that uh, that don't work, but these are more graphic intensive games. And one thing I want to show you is that you'll see sometimes a video plays when I'm over a game and sometimes they won't. Once you have your device and you connect it to your Wi-Fi, you'll be able to do something like this where you scrape the data and it'll pull all the box art off. It'll pull, um, you know, video that it can on the game. And so right now I'm just pulling um, a search for this uh, this game to see if we can get the video installed. It usually doesn't take this long, but let's give it a second. So there it is, Dolphin Blue. So you see that camera that's right there. If we install that one, it's going to download the video. So let's take the video. And now anytime I am over this uh, space, it will play a video in the background. And so my goal, since I just got this device, I really haven't had time to do it. But my goal is to have all my favorites uh, installed with the video downloaded. And it does take space on your memory card so make sure that if you are going to do that that you have room and you've deleted games or consoles it off the off the memory that you definitely will not play uh, another thing i want to point out is that as i'm scrolling through these consoles i have removed some consoles that i personally will not be playing so to see all the consoles all you have to do is go to game collection settings and here I have 53 consoles selected, but you can see I've unselected some of these. And so like, I have no plans of playing any of these Ataris, uh, uh, ColecoVision, any of these other ones, and Television. Uh, now, one of the things, is, one of the reasons why I took them off is if you are uh, trying to play it, it does use a specialized controller. And typically, uh, just so your standard USB controller is not going to be able to run some of these systems. And so you would have to find the right controller, USB controller, to perfectly play some of those consoles. And then otherwise, I, I just don't want to play some of these really old games when, you know, I have access to pretty much all of the late 80s and 90s of video games to choose from i'm not going to focus in on the on the 70s unfortunately um, one other cool thing that i did is uh i deleted probably most of the psp games that are on here it's just not i don't see myself playing the psp games, so i found myself with a lot of space on this 256 gigs i just took some videos of of the simpsons and so here you have all the Treehouse of Horrors. I just put them all in here and I can run them on this device. And so what's cool about this is when I'm done with this uh, emulator or this um, retro console, I'm actually plugging it in to an arcade cabinet that I've modified to allow access to, uh, to, to, ha to house this. And so I've taken one of your one-up machines that you find at Walmart or Best Buy. I took out the components on the inside and I'm gonna be plugging in this device to the uh, LCD screen that's included with the one-up machine. And then I've swapped out the controllers to add in more buttons. And I've wired them into a USB uh, port that I'm gonna be plugging into uh, this retro controller. So maybe I'll do a third video showing you the finalized product. Um, I also have music downloaded that I've put in and installed onto this device. You gotta own the music, but I've put it into uh, BGM folders so typically when i'm scrolling through these games it will be playing my customized list of music and it's usually high energy music and so i am very satisfied with this device i do want to show you this game in action so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to uh favorites and what i did is i've 
put together a list of games that I want to show you today. But at the same time, I do want to mention that if you favorite a game from any of these categories, they will appear here under favorites. And even though I hid some of those games, uh, those consoles off the screen, you can go to all games and see every game that's installed. So you, you, you will not have to worry that uh, some are missing. And uh, so let's go down here to favorites. And the first game I want to show you, one of the reasons why I purchased this is that I'm pl plugging it into a arcade cabinet. So I plan on playing all the beat em up. So let's load up X-Men, show you this in action. And I have had the ability to play some of these games on here. I will tell you personally that I don't see any delay, any um, any issues running these uh, these uh, games off of the, the main emulator. So we're going to let it bo boot up. I'm going to put in some credits and I'm going to show you a clip of playing it. Um, so let's go with Nightcrawler. And as you can see here, the game's loading up. And here we go. And so I'm using my own PC controller, USB controller that I like. Uh, I did not use the included controllers because one, it requires batteries, uh, but two, uh, they do feel flimsy and they don't have the triggers on the bottom. And so some games you may want to have the ability to squeeze a trigger, whereas as uh, the controllers that were included, uh, they did not have that. They were they were simple analog or just a simple punch, uh, push button, uh, shoulder buttons. Uh, they, it felt like a PS1 controller. Uh, and so, as you can see, X-Men is running pretty good. I'm not really focusing on what I'm doing, though, because I am talking to you. So let's exit out of this game. This is not meant to be an emulic review, so if you are wondering how to do some of these things, all you have to do is go to some tutorials. Now, the cool thing is, is they installed some tutorials in this uh, console, so you do not have to look very hard if you're wondering how to run emulic and some of the techniques to get in and out of games. Uh, it's very easy. Push two buttons. You're going to have a specialized button that is basically like your command button. And then you can push that in, and, and another button that's going to help you do things like raise the sound, lower the sound very quickly, quick save, uh, quick load. Um, and so we're putting in some credits into The Simpsons. You can see here you can pick a character. Now, one thing that I learned the hard way with The Simpsons, and this is common with most arcade games, is that if you put it on the four-player mode, you're not going to be able to pick your character. And think about it. When you went to an arcade, or maybe you never done uh, a, a, played a, a retro arcade, but when you put your quarter in, it told you, like, you are Bart. And, and if you moved over to the left a little bit, you would be Homer. Or if you moved over to the right, you would be Lisa. And so even though you're not... Uh, you're not um, going to be um, playing on an arcade cabinet. The game does remember that. And I don't remember this arc this bomb there. Uh, I don't know if this has been modified at all, but I know I've played this game a lot. I don't ever remember a bomb there. So this might have been hacked, or maybe this is an earlier version. Uh, but I need to play through this if there are some changes like that, because I, I know there's not a bomb there, um, typically. Uh, but yeah, you can see that Simpsons is running pretty good and it was in a different category So it was not the main version. You might find the main version in there. This was under the arcade version uh, We're gonna load up NES now When we get to some of these newer games I'm gonna turn down the sound because I do not want to get a copyright infringement and some of these games have licensed music that they play and so here we have Mario uh, It runs fine did not die to the first Goomba. All right, so that's Mario. We're not going to spend a lot of time there. But you can see it runs NES fairly fairly well. We're going to move up the chain to Super Mario. And I believe I did save this one, so we can just jump right into it. We won't have to go through a loading screen. So here we go. I loaded it, and we're just waiting for this. I should have I should have waited for this to finish because this is uncomfortably long. And we can raise the sound if you want to hear it. Here we go. Jumping in. And I'm going to save it here. 
So next time I don't have to go through that. And there are all six buttons enabled on here. So we have the shoulder buttons now. We have um, B, X, and Y. All the, all the buttons are now enabled for this particular game. All the Super Nintendo games are going to run like that. Uh, we're going to exit out of this game. Let's move over to another one. Let's see what we have next. We want to go to N64. So we're going to go to Mario 64. I do want to tell you that this is common amongst most uh, ROMs. But N64 seems to be very difficult to emulate perfectly. And so right now I'm running uh, Super Mario 64 off of one of the included emulators called Parallel. It is probably the lowest quality, but most reliable. Um, and, and unfortunately, I don't have a save state that I can load into here. So we're going to just boot up a new game. Uh, I did notice that Parallel has a lot of visual glitches, but they don't affect the gameplay at all. But because it is a lower quality uh, uh, graphical uh, view of the game, uh, the frame rate does not drop. It usually stays around 60 frames per second. So if you are buying this console to play N64, just know that you're going to have to tinker with the included emulators and just know that some of the games, no matter how hard you try, are just not going to look good. What's interesting is that I'm going to show you some Dreamcast and some other games on other systems, which technically require a little bit more graphical power, run just fine. So this, this is just a problem common with N64 that it is a little bit more difficult to emulate. Now I do have a $300 uh, retro console that I purchased that has way more computing power and it does not have this issue. So you are seeing the, uh, the limitations of the $75 computer here. But uh, you can see here I'm playing Mario. It works just fine. We're going to go ahead and, oh, this one does not save support, uh, save state. So parallel um, is not going to, is not going to save it. I was running on another emulator that did have save states. So just know that you might have some issues saving this game. However, if you save it in the game, it will still remember that you saved it. So when you, when you go back in and load the game, it will be there if you do save from the included way to save, which this one you have to be the level. I'm not going to do that. But so we're going to leave N64 now. And um, I found that at the N64 level and above, you will find very commonly that you, you will just not be able to run a game. And to tinker with it, again, this is more of a uh, emulic review now at this point versus the console review but if we go to advanced game options you can switch the emulators and so typically the uh, Mupin 64 plus next alt that has the best graphics but it will not run mario 64 very well on here i've tried it uh, so I, I stick with uh, parallel 64 or this one here uh, but you can you can tinker through on on the n64 some are going to work great even you know with the best selection others you'll have to tinker to find the right solution so now we're going to continue on uh, i want to show you the playstation so this is playstation one we're what on playstation seven now so playstation one um was what 25 years ago so you know it, the graphics aren't that great but i do not think that you're going to have any issues running a playstation game on here uh, not like the N64. So the N64, you know, hit or miss on some of these games, but uh, on the PlayStation, uh, you're going to be able to run just about every ROM in the PlayStation category, and it is quite extensive. And remember, if there is a ROM that's missing, it's very easy to go in and add the ROM. If you have this connected to your Wi-Fi, you can plug into the network and add and delete ROMs that way, or you can simply take out the micro SD and plug it into your control uh, computer and install the ROM that way. But you can see here, I'm running Gran Turismo. Uh, we're going to exit out of this. Oh, one thing on the Gran Turismo, it was the, the European copy. So there was no English uh, in, in there. It was like Spanish, German, Russian, but there was no English. Uh, now we're going to move over to uh, this category here. This is uh, Naomi. This is the Sega Dreamcast version of an arcade cabinet so uh, you can find the Dreamcast version of uh, Mar oh and I got to lower the sound here because I don't want to get I don't want to get uh, copyright infringement because uh, 
some of these songs are licensed. So let's lower the sound. So I would I promise you that the sound comes in great. Uh, I don't see any any issues with the sound on this game, but uh, let's load it up. This is the arcade cabinet version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And so if you do know how to access the uh, manufacturer settings, uh, I don't have access to it. Um, let's see here. That was interesting. Um, you can get into the... Um, Sometimes you can get into the um, the owner, like you can go in and just add in so that you can unlock all the characters without having to ha having to to play through it. But if you are going to um, try to unlock everything manually, then what you're going to want to do is have a save state. And I already saved one, so let's load it. So here's one that I loaded already. And so as I'm playing the game you're going to want to continue to save before you exit. And there is a mode so that when you exit a ROM, it automatically saves. And when you load the ROM, it'll automatically load from that auto save. So that way you're not having to worry about fumbling around with quick saves. Um, but let's take a look here. Just want to show you this working. So we have punch and kicks. Um, and one thing that I, I will say is that you will need to tinker with a lot of these fighting games with the button mapping and it's not not necessarily an easy thing to do but you can mess with the uh the button mapping all right so we're going to go ahead and back out of here So that was running off of Naomi. Uh, we're going to look at Neo Geo Metal Slug. And I just selected some games that I feel like people are buying this console to play. So if you want, if you like Metal Slug, every Metal Slug game is on here over various different consoles. So And it's so cool to go back and beat these games because, like, I remember going to the arcade, spending like ten dollars and not even getting halfway through a game. Or like, you would you would spend a dollar on a game and you're like, yeah, I could keep putting in credits in here, or I could go play something else. And so you would just play the same first two levels over and over again because that's usually when you would you would start losing. So being able to come back to these old games and not worry that you just got a cheap shot by this guy right here, I'm gonna knife you. All right, get over here, get over here. I'm gonna knife you. Ah, oh, come on. There you are. If you get real close to them, you'll knife them. There you go. Knifing everybody now. Okay, so anyways, that's Metal Slug. Let's get out of here. And let's try PSP. This is probably the most graphically... Well, between PSP and Dreamcast, they're, they're going to be some, some of the higher graphical... Uh, hard, uh, requirements needed to play um, I did quick save this one so let's see if we can just load it we're gonna load this save state oh I didn't do it right there we go so it's loading the save state so you can see here the graphics are pretty good uh, PSP games look really good, although I am not going to be able to play these on my retro console because uh, you, I don't, I'm just going to have a joystick and six buttons. I'm not going to have a, an analog stick to, to use some of these games. And so you, some of them will require the D-pad, like this one will require the D-pad. Uh, so this one's not too bad to run on the retro console, but a lot of the ones that, you know, are going to require, I just deleted them. One, it saves a lot of space. And two, I'm really using this to... Man, is my car broken? Okay, there we go. It was I was peeling out. Um, okay, so you can see this game is working pretty good. We're going to leave this. And so I do want to do another review of just how to run Emuelic and just some of the things that I learned playing it. But um, I do not have time for that today. 
I did want to show you all. Let's see. So like, let's say you want to play a Dreamcast game. Crazy Taxi works really good. I do got to lower the volume on Crazy Taxi because it has that great soundtrack that we all know and love. And so one thing I noticed with uh, Crazy Taxi, and it hasn't been consistent through all games, but it does rumble my controller. <laughs> so again, that's just part of the ROM setup. You know, it's nothing unique to this super console, X2 Pro. But um, all in all, I give this, for the money, $75. I give this a 4.5 out of 5 or a 9 out of 10. Highly recommend it. This is um, something that you can give to, to, to as a gift. I think anyone will cherish it because if you're a young kid, you know, 14 to 20, to be able to go back and play some of these games uh, that are just hard to find is going to be eye-opening, you know, for, 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 for a younger generation. And also for older generation, you know, 30s, 40s, like myself, uh, being able to go back to these games in your childhood and play them and have an experience that's very similar to what you would expect to, to find if you were to buy. Um, so, for instance, Crazy Taxi. I love this game. If I wanted to play it, I have to go and find a Dreamcast. So I'm going to spend, you know, 100 bucks there. And then I got to find the game in working order. So another 20 $40. I really don't know what the, the market is for Crazy Taxi or a Dreamcast. On top of that, I need to have space to plug it in. I need to find, you know, you know, the TV that can, you know, run it. Because sometimes some of these consoles run off of the, the old red, yellow, white cables versus the HDMI cables. So you need an adapter. And even when you do all of that, uh, if you if you're playing on an LCD screen, it's just not going to look the same, or there might be a little bit of a delay. So to having everything installed on um, on a system like this for seventy five dollars, I mean, you're just saving yourself a lot of time and hassles. There are going to be some frustrating things where you just can't get a game to load up, or uh, the graphics are are horrible because it's just you know full of bugs. I would say that that is maybe 10% of the time you're going to encounter that. And that is not a limitation of the Super Console X2 Pro. This is a limitation of all emulators and ROMs. You know, these are things that are constantly being updated and improved upon to try to get the best uh, emulation available out of these older games. And so one cool thing is, is that you can connect this to Wi-Fi. You can update it. So right now it runs 4.5. Uh, the version of Emuelic of 4.5. I think they're on 4.6 right now, so it's a fairly recent one. I'm sh oh, I'm stuck here. Let's see. My tires are stuck. I've never been this stuck before in this game. Usually you're just kind of spongy. And oh, there we go. Um, oh, no, I wasted a lot of time on that. Uh, but what I, what I was saying here is that uh, you can update your console. If you connect it to Wi-Fi, you can find updates on it. Uh, and, and get a newer version of Emuelic. You can update the emulators. And if you have access to these ROMs, you can go and buy the ROMs uh, and install them onto this device. And so in my opinion, for $75 shipped to your door, you can't go wrong. Now, some downsides to this device is that it is not the strongest computer. So if you try to play some games, you're going to notice the limitations of this. But if you stick with Dreamcast and down, uh, which is basically everything that's included here, uh, you're you're not going to have any issues. And I don't think there's any licensed music here, so we'll go ahead and turn up the sound on this. Uh, I'm playing some Soul Calibur now. You can hear the beautiful Dreamcast loading screen. And so uh, another downside with this is that you're ordering this from China. And so if you're trying to buy this for a birthday present or a gift for someone, order it a month in advance. Now this vendor has a 12-day delivery window. So if you order it today, uh, which is June 14th, you may get it by the end of June. But keep in mind that it is coming from China. If there's any kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> anything going on in the world, 
you may not uh, get your device as quickly as you'd hope for. And AliExpress is really good about finding out if you're going to get your device on time. They'll give you a little bit of a credit if it shows up late. But I got mine. Uh, it, it was uh, expected to arrive in 12 days. It came in like nine days. So it was still very quick, but it's not Amazon two-day delivery. There is no way to get it in two days. So don't wait till the last minute to buy this as a gift. As you can see, I just hopped from one game to the next, and it's working perfectly for me. Uh, if you have two controllers, you can plug them both in. If you, uh, It did come with a adapter that allows me to connect uh, four people. Oh man, Astro's got his butt kicked. Um, and so, all in all, the pros of this device, $75, everything's done for you. You will not need to do any type of modification. Uh, there is something that you might encounter that I will show you because you might buy this and then say, oh my God, this YouTuber did not tell me this is an issue. Let me show you. I'm going to see if I can replicate it. Um, but there are going to be some ROMs that you will not be able to run initially. But then when you change the uh, emulator, it'll run perfectly. And so let's just pick a game. And I think it, it happened with X-Men. So let me see if I can. So I had by default it puts it on auto and so typically that's going to be good enough to just find the right emula uh, emulator to run this but sometimes when it's on auto it, you will get the red screen of death so you're, you're going to buy this you're going to load up x-men and then you're going to be leaving nasty comments on this video because you can't load x-men and i said you could load x -Men. that is not what's happening here all you have to do is back out the way you would back out of any game you're going to hold the a button you see how it says game options you're going to go to advanced game options you're going to go to emulator and you're going to pick one of these emulators i typically try mame 2010 first for any mame games so we're going to go there and now we're going to load x-men and so i, I did want to mention that uh, that is one of the most common troubleshooting that you're going to have to do for this is finding the right emulator and it's very difficult to break this i've i've run other AliExpress computers off of uh, off of Emulic before. Uh, one that you're going to find quite often for 45, 50 bucks is going to be the Arcade Box. Uh, you can save the 10 or 20 dollars to get it. In my opinion, the extra 25 dollars that you're spending for this device is apparent in the higher end games that you can run. Uh, Arcade Box will definitely have some issues running Dreamcast. It will have some issues running N64. With this device, I do not feel like I am cutting any of the computing speed by playing it. And so um, that pretty much concludes my review. If you have any questions, leave comments in the video. I will try to answer everybody. If you're thinking about getting a retro console, I highly recommend this particular one. And I do recommend getting your own PC controller to go with it. They make all the various different ones. So if you're primarily buying it to get you know, an N64 experience, you can buy a USB-enabled uh uh, N64 controller or a Super Nintendo controller. I just have um, it's called a GameSir um, PC controller. It feels like an Xbox 360 controller, but uh, that that is the one that I really like. I'll see if I can link it down below for you as well. Uh, the controller almost costs as much as the console, so keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, got a lot out of this video. If you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you.